The crumbling Interstate 91 viaduct that runs through downtown Springfield, and in fact is just across the street from our Channel 57 studios, is finally getting some very badly needed repairs and reconstruction. It's a huge, expensive undertaking, sometimes disrupting travel on and around the highway. Connecting Point correspondent Carolee McGrath spoke with Richard Massey of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation about the impact, scope, and timeline of the project. We're under construction now to replace the deck of the viaduct, and the viaduct is the uh, elevated bridge structure that runs through downtown here, basically from State Street to the middle of the I-291 interchange. Uh, I-91 in Springfield here was opened 45 years ago. Most of the viaduct construction is original construction. And the deck is to the point where really the amount of repairs that we needed to do on an emergency basis dictated that we needed to completely replace the deck and put a new deck on the surface of the viaduct. And when you're talking about repairs done on an emergency basis, often there would be a lane closure. Talk to me about that. Right, right. We would be notified that uh, part of the deck had broken apart and we would have to uh, go out there uh, in the middle of, you know, perhaps commute traffic and uh, make an emergency repair to fix that hole, repair it sometimes on a temporary basis during the day, during the commute, which is the most disruptive time to be out there making those kinds of repairs, and then sometimes come back at night to make sort of a more permanent fix. And that was happening on an increasingly frequent basis over the last couple of years, you, you've probably noticed. And uh, that's because, again, the deck of the structure is 45 years right. old. It's reinforced concrete it's reached the end of its reliable, useful life, and it needs a complete replacement. So what exits are affected during this uh, project? Okay, right now during the phase of the project that we're in, um, the two on-ramps to the viaduct from East Columbus Ave at basically Union Street and State Street, those on-ramps are closed. Um, the two off-ramps on the southbound side, um, exit seven to the Memorial Bridge and Boland Way downtown, and exit six to the Basketball Hall of Fame area at Union Street, those off-ramps are closed. There's a, an additional ramp that takes traffic from Route 20 uh, to I-91 southbound that's also closed. That's an on-ramp on the southbound side. Okay, and how is this all um, communicated to people? I know you've had a, a few different community meetings, but how are you getting the word out about this? Right, we do have, uh, during construction, we're having uh, quarterly regular meetings to notify the public of where we are in the construction, what's coming up, and that will continue throughout construction. We also have a project website, basically I-91 Viaduct Rehab. If you search that, you'll find our webpage. And on that page is a link where people can actually sign up to receive notifications when we send them out of what changes are coming in terms of traffic um, and what stages of construction are upcoming and what detours uh, will be in place. So uh, people can get on that list and receive email notifications whenever we send them out about the project. We currently have over 2,300 people on that list okay. receiving those notifications. And there's also uh, work being done downtown on East Columbus, West Columbus, and really outside of our building um, off of Hamden Street. There's work being done. Tell right. me about that. Well, basically due to the ramp closures that are in effect and the traffic that can't get on the highway that would normally sort of on the northbound side on East Columbus Ave. You know, the basically means there'll be more traffic on East Columbus Ave. So we've been working to make improvements to East Columbus Ave to handle the anticipated increase in traffic volume because of the traffic that can't get on the highway. On the West Columbus Ave side, on the other side of the viaduct on the southbound side, because of the off-ramps that are closed and people who would normally use I-91 southbound to access the downtown area, um, they need to get off of the highway sooner and we've constructed a temporary ramp, we call it Temp Exit 7-6, which is for the traffic that would use those closed off-ramps, they can get off north of where they normally would and take West Columbus Ave into the downtown area. So we've been doing work on those streets basically to handle that anticipated increase in traffic volume due to the ramp closures. Now the other night I was coming home from Olympia from a hockey game and there was a big backup um, coming 91 south but I lucked out because I got off on 291 so I didn't have a problem. What kind of uh, traffic delays are you expecting? Right, well we've been uh, telling people generally uh, 10 to 15 minutes is probably the maximum delay uh, once the traffic settles out. Initially, when everything is new to everybody, it might be a little bit longer. But, and that would be no, mainly on the southbound side, where um, as traffic approaches the viaduct from the south, there are three lanes that we need to merge down to two lanes. We're basically repairing one half at, at a time, which we can reserve two lanes on most of the viaduct structure. But on the southbound side, 
as 91 approaches the viaduct. 91 actually drops to two lanes in right. the normal condition. And so in that location where we do this lane drop and merge, it's traffic merging down to one lane. And that's where the longer backup occurs and the longer delays are on the southbound side, both in the morning and in the afternoon uh, peak commutes, especially in the afternoon. So you had some really great weather in December for construction. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face doing a project like this, especially working through the winter? Right. Well, actually, on a normal MassDOT project, we wouldn't include the winter months from December 1st to March 15th as active construction periods. But because of the urgency of getting the viaduct done in as quick a manner as possible, um, we have special provisions in this contract where the contractor is expected to work throughout every winter and not shut down. So um, the uh, time durations that are set in the contract reflect the contractor working through each winter. Uh, we do expect that normally there's a drop off in the level of productivity due to the weather conditions so that they have to deal five with. Five degrees <laughs> right. or a lot of snow. Uh, but again, they're expected to work through each winter and, and that's to help us try to get things back to normal sooner. And what's the timeline and, and how much does something, a project like this cost? Okay, um, the timeline for this project, according to the contract, is that the contractor is supposed to have I-91 and the ramps uh, back to their normal conditions. No more lane closures, no more ramp closures by August of 2018. But there's an incentive in, in the contract that for up to 180 days early that the contractor gets 91 and the ramps back open, they get a $50,000 a day incentive payment. Mm -hmm. So that's a maximum of up to $9 million to get the lanes and ramps on the highway back to normal. And currently our contractor projects that they will have that done by the end of 2017, December of 2017. So basically they would, uh, if they accomplish that, they will get the maximum incentive payment. Now when the highway was built back in the 60s, was there um, any sort of anticipation that there would be so many cars traveling in that area? And, and how many cars uh, travel on that route every day? Right, you know, I'm not familiar with what the projections were back in the 60s uh, of what traffic would be in the future, but um, currently today I-91 carries uh, and it varies between exits, you know, uh, from 75 to 80,000 cars a day to up to 115,000 cars a day. The busiest section is actually between 291 and 391, where it's 115,000 cars a day. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in and uh, keeping us up to date on the, the construction. And certainly people can log on to the website that you had mentioned as well um, to get more information as they need it. Thank okay. you so much for joining no, us. Thank you for having me again. Appreciate it.